Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is very a true and welcome back to Civilization 6, because the game just keeps picking up new bits and pieces of the New Frontier Pass, but uh, recently it got one that particularly caught my eye, because we got ourselves a bit of a Roman update. And specifically, both Gaul and Rome, though admittedly, you know, it's Eastern Rome, so we're not exactly talking about a Vercingetorix versus Caesar showdown, as fun as that would have been. No, this was one of the Byzantine emperors at the end of the 10th century, and uh, he fought a lot of wars, uh, he killed a lot of Bulgarians, and, uh, particular fun thing, this is the guy who officially created the Varangian Guard, the big unit of Viking bodyguards that kept the Eastern emperors safe. A unit that would in fact go on to include future King of Norway, Harald Hardrada, who's also in Civ 6, only a few years after Basil II passed away. Isn't that cool? I love it when there's connections between the different leaders. But back to Basil, oh he's a flipping beast. Alright, he's about two things, spreading religion and murdering the flip out of people. So uh, let's dive in because he's hilarious. And of course we've got a new game mode as well, Dramatic Ages, I like the sound of that. So, there's no normal ages anymore, either you're in a golden age, or you're straight down into a flipping dark age, and in this dark age, yeah, part of your empire just sort of, uh, breaks away. So, we'll be turning that on, sure. Ooh, one other fun new thing by the way, these days if you want to, yeah, you can just turn various natural wonders on or off, so... If you want to make sure something appears or doesn't, you can do, which is marvellous. Still, I'll leave them all on. Let's go for Emperor Difficulty, seems appropriate for Basil, and uh, dive in, because seriously, this guy's got some fun tricks up his sleeve. Ah, now this'll do. Okay, so, the big thing you need when you're playing as Basil is... Uh, you need your own religion, alright? Technically, he's still pretty good if he's just following a religion and playing the religious game, but to get the most out of him, you need a religion. So, uh, yeah, we got some good stuff around here. We got ourselves incense, we got ourselves tobacco, that's some faith so I can rush to a pantheon, and we got some decent-ish spots for a holy site going forward. So, uh, yeah, this will do the job right here. Yep, decent riverside hill start here, so my base city's producing, yeah, two food, two production. Got a good 2-2 two -two right here, that'll do as a starting point. So, get that scout out immediately, it's definitely scout because, uh, yeah, we need to get down a holy site. We want a holy site, that means we're going to be needing astrology, ideally, we need a natural wonder. And if you'd like to give me a builder or a relic right now, I'd really appreciate it, and... No, just inspiration. Well, that's boring as anything. Still, another village gives me 40 gold. I shan't say no to that. That might help me, you know, buy something quite useful down the line. Oh, and there we go. We got lucky. Kilimanjaro literally just around the corner. Love it. And I tell you what. Volcano. Crops. A little bit of gypsum right here. This could be an excellent spot for city number two. Right, city-state nearby, not the best in many ways. Really good one if you're Mali, my favourite Civ, but uh, not so much for me. Still, I know I'm the only person impacting them right now, so at the bare minimum, uh, yeah, there's probably nobody right here. And to be honest, these guys are just very useful backup against the odd barbarian, so uh, yeah, let them do the heavy lifting, and then me, I want to get over here and actually be the one to take out the camp, because uh, if I don't, it's Dark Age time, potentially. And a nice free camp for me to just walk into over here. Love it. Bit of a lack of food, to be honest. But yeah, let's just get a settler out. Because we do at least have plenty of early game production. Okay, a few turns later we have run into Yerevan. And they're only being influenced by us. So yeah, it seems like we're in a fairly quiet corner of the map. I'm pretty happy with that. Especially as uh, that means uh, I get a free envoy for free. And that means I'm getting more and more faith coming in. So uh, got down this second city by the volcano over here. Getting a holy site down here. Getting a holy site down here. Because, yeah, Basil needs to have his own religion. So much so, one of his abilities is uh, holy sites give him a bonus great profit point. So, he's kind of set up, even on the higher difficulties, to be able to get a religion locked down. Another camp goes down to the south. More money, more score, and uh, we've got ourselves a pantheon. So, okay, things looking good here. Things looking good. 
Ah, tragically, someone managed to get to the free settler one before I got to it. I like that one. Fertility rights is nice for a free builder, but I've already almost got a builder out, though 10% faster growth is nice. But on this occasion... Yeah, it's gotta be Divine Spark. I like Divine Spark. Let's just make sure we get a religion. Just lock it down, and in general, it's a great one going forward. I like great person points. Oh, and hello, sexy. Right, I think we might have found a good site for city number three, because I uh, can't help but notice giant pile of horses, uh, and we're gonna be needing some horses to make this work. I really don't need to be worried, though. We are flying ahead of everybody else already. Love it. Aha! Finally! We had to go a fair way south, but we found the Netherlands. So, okay, they're normally pretty chill. I'm not too worried. Though, admittedly, they should be a bit worried about me. Okay, I've got my Great Prophet locked down. How did we actually uh, do in that case? And I can't actually see, but I assume it was fine. Yeah, because uh, there's only actually... Uh, hang on, how many religions are there? Yes, just one, including... Including Eastern Orthodoxy. Which somebody who wasn't Byzantine set up first, which... Okay, that just feels a bit rude, but whatever. Still, I'll say, Emperor Difficulty being literally the second person to get down a religion, and I'm pretty sure the first just got down Stonehenge, uh, yeah, not bad. So, as you literally stole my flipping religion, you dicks, I guess we'll be going for the classic and worshipping Tabby. Honestly, I love Jesuit education and being able to, yeah, just buy campus and theatre square directly with faith, that's just... It's really nice. I like work ethic too, because, yeah, that can easily represent, like, you know, four to six extra production, which in the early game is really nice, but I can't turn down Jesuit education, damn it. And as for my belief, uh, yeah, there's only really one you're gonna be wanting to go with for Basil, because he's all about the Holy War. Converting people, fighting people, converting then fighting people, it's gotta be Crusade. So, uh, plus 10 combat strength within the borders of foreign cities that follow this religion. You're gonna be wanting to aggressively spread, uh, fight, 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 aggressively spread some more, it's gonna be beautiful. And yeah, by the looksy of it, I'm like at the edge of a big archipelago thing sticking off the north of a continent, because uh, yeah, we're actually very close by to the icy wastes up north. So, okay, we got a nice quiet period just to, you know, set up the religion, build the army a bit. Then, uh, I'm very sorry to my Dutch followers, but I've got a bad feeling about the Netherlands. Still, kind of overlooked a bit when I first found it, but actually, Yerevan's going to be really bloody useful to me. So yeah, I can start uh, promoting my religious units as I want. Okay, let's start sending some people in that direction. Classical era we go, and you may notice, yes indeed, uh, we've hit a golden age, uh, the Netherlands is thrilled, and... Okay, better and better, we even got hanging gardens down, so okay, this has been a damn good start. But also importantly, you may notice there's been a change, which is, yes, it used to be this kind of weird situation where you didn't want to go over the Golden Age threshold because those era score were just lost. No, now they get carried over. So I'm already two thirds of the way to the next Golden Age, which is uh, really, really damn good. So you don't have to like weirdly deliberately slow yourself down to try and make sure you don't get a wonder too quickly, which is uh, very nice. You may also notice I haven't made a dedication. Yep, a thing again that doesn't happen in dramatic ages. Instead, you get yourself Golden Age policy cards. So you can just slot them in and out as you wish, which is very, very nice indeed. Though right now, I don't have a wild card slot, so they physically can't actually go anywhere. Well, I tell you what, if I've got hanging gardens, I may as well go for, you know, the flipping oracle too. It's a really nice one. I like getting more and more great person points. And as the Empire starts to shake up, big moment here. We could just about settle next to, yes, two separate horses. And we are going to be building one a hell of a horde. So many, in fact, I have renamed the city Hippopotopolis, which is a very complicated Greek pun, because Hippopotamus means river horse. It literally means a hippos, potamos, horse, river. Because the Greeks apparently didn't know what Hippopotamus was, so they just thought it was a river horse. But, like, we're next to a river, and uh, there's a bunch of horses here, but we're also a city. So it's going to be... Look, it's funny if you're a classicist. Oh, we've got exciting news from down south. The Dutch have got their own religion, so, uh, okay, this is actually kind of good news, like, 
really good news. Because if there's one thing Basil likes more than murdering people, it's converting people from a different religion, then murdering them. Okay, the pieces are starting to come together here. So Thessalonica's now picked up a campus, a very nice campus right next to a reef there. So that's plus two science immediately. And of course, thanks to Jesuit education, that'll be another two science straight away. Thank you. So let's just pump out, yeah, shrines, oracles, all the rest of it. We just need giant piles of faith as a starting point. I'd like you to know we missed out on the oracle by a single cocking turn, and I am furious. Still, at least we get a one-turn settler out of it, so I shan't complain too much, I guess. Also, we just learned that you can ride horses, which is... Uh, Oh, that's going to be even worse news for the Netherlands. And even better as the shrines go down. Right, it's time to get converting. So we got some very convenient folks nearby. Right over here, just a little city-state good starting point. And with one more spread of religion, I think we might just have our first convert. Lovely. So this city-state now follows tabbyism. Meanwhile, down south in Hippopotopolis, yes, we've got ourselves, oh, horses, so many damn horses. And also some weird things that look a bit like horses, but also have horns, presumably making them better for stabbing when we ride them into battle. Okay, took us until almost the bloody end of this entire era, but at least we've now finally got ourselves a wild card policy slot, so uh, yeah, now we can just sort of uh, choose whatever we flipping want, and I love monumentality. Monumentality is always good, especially as uh, I can start spamming a hell of a lot of settlers really fast, which might be the best bet to avoid a dark age, because uh, kind of worried that's where we're going right now. Yeah, I've got 9 turns uh, to get 13 points to avoid a Dark Age, but in this mode, uh, you also gain era score for every single tech or civic, so uh, keeping up with science and culture, not a bad idea, good way to, you know, potentially dodge some stuff, so... Uh, okay, also promotions, but I've been kind of unlucky, the map's been so quiet, I haven't really had much to fight, so as a result of that, there's been less opportunity to get some promotions going on, so... Uh, Okay, what can we get fast? We can get currency in five, uh, that's nice. And military tradition in two, so I don't really need that, but it will at least get me a handful more points. I don't think I can get pyramids in time, maybe with a bit of chopping. We might just be able to squeeze that one in, actually. If we could squeeze that in. Can we do this? I don't know. Right, well, you just keep going in this direction. Try and convert this lot over towards you if you'd be so. Never mind, you're already spent. Got it. Okay, new city in six coming out of here. I should just be able to rush that down over here. Very soon, I could buy a new cellar over here, move down towards, yeah, the Galapagos Islands are right there. Then again, I might not be able to get there in time. Not in nine if I have to, and I don't think I can buy it here because it does still, uh, yeah, it does still eat a population. So... Uh, Okay, next turn, we buy a new pop over here, we get it moving, and hopefully we can get it there in time. But then again, hang on. What have I got in terms of sailing? Have I got any sailing right now? No, I can only get builders to embark, not sellers just yet. So, okay, that's, that's going to be tricky. On the plus side, Thessalonica, I've rushed up to reinforce material. So, yeah, we're getting some dumb good yields here. And why is that suddenly picking up? Why have you just picked up science? I don't know, but I guess I'm not going to question it. Right, new settler, immediately please. Right, you, get down over here and... Uh, how far can you... Oh, you could barely make it flipping. Okay, how about instead we get you over here? There's a bunch of stuff you could grab. There's some basic fish, there's some turtles. That's not so bad. You know what? Get over here, we'll just have another settlement, it's not the worst thing in the world. We'll have uh, one over here, one over here, maybe we could dodge this, I don't know. Well, we definitely can't if I've lost the cocking pyramids, no, that's it, it's over, we're in a dark age. Well, may as well just start investing in a bit of science and I can get a really fast campus down because yeah, I get a bit of the, uh, the production refunded. Not a great spot, but it'll do. And if we're going to miss it regardless, we may as well at least, you know, go down to a good spot and get something proper going on. So, okay, you head down in this direction. Yeah, settle down over here. We're going to lock down Galapagos. Though, admittedly, 
Might be some issues. Yeah, it depends on uh, what age the Netherlands is heading into. Okay, if there's about to be a Dark Age, we need to think very carefully. Because Dark Age in dramatic ages, uh, that means some of my cities are just going to go, you know what, no, never mind, we're going to go do our own thing. So uh, I might want to not put down this town until after we hit the next era to make sure it doesn't flip. Right now, I assume we're going to lose Ansira, so uh, that doesn't have walls. It's not going to be a big problem. We should be able to deal with it. So, uh, also I'm a bit worried about, yeah, being over here. You know what? I'm going to start over here a bit more modestly. We're going to start over here. We're going to lock down 10 million bits of tobacco. We might be able to get in range of... Uh, no, we won't be in range of citrus. But it's a lovely spot. There's a nice lake here and everything. I love it. This is just going to be, you know, our forward command post for when we definitely don't attack the Dutch. Okay, I don't know what's about to happen, but it's time. Let's get some cavalry out on the field because uh, we can field cav uh, super nice and fast. Okay, how bad is this about to be? Because, never mind, there's still another turn, so not that bad yet. You just wait there. We need to see how bad this situation's gonna be before we make any, you know, absolute final decisions. And at least we're still moving at speed for the minute. And yes, as I suspected, it's Ansiris. So we've lost one, but nothing more. And Wilhelmina, meanwhile, is in a golden age, so yeah, this is why we needed to be a bit on the, uh, the careful side, and yeah, we've lost our golden age policies, but we've now gained a whole bunch of dark age ones. Oh, but this'll do. Massive amounts of science in the event of holy site, tiny bit of culture loss without. I mean, that's pretty damn good, right there, yes, I will gladly take all of that, that's... That's pretty good. And am I going to be trading any wonders anytime soon? Probably not, no. Let's get some builders out. That's going to be useful right there. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, everything looks so grim now, dear, oh, flippin' dear. Right, okay, everything's fine, but oh yeah, so this is why we waited before settling. Because, uh, yeah, now, now issues. Now at this point, uh, problems. So uh, you're just going to return north. For a bit, okay? We're not going to be settling right in the face of uh, the Dutch. Not during their golden age. Okay, the cavalry has arrived and yeah, they've only got basic warriors and also no walls and basically no population. Unfortunately, uh, they've gone Protestant. So uh, we're going to be needing to uh, sort some of that out, I'd say. Still, I've got heavy cavalry, I've got light cavalry. This will not be difficult to, you know, chunk our way through. So we're just going to be uh, rushing into here, doing some really, uh, really nice work. But this is only the beginning, damn it. This is just the start, all right? Our cavalry is doing an excellent job uh, just cutting through them. But, yeah, there's a lot more we can do, which is why I've brought a priest. You see, you may notice down there on the bottom right, I'm already gaining plus three to everything just because of taxes. I set up a religion, therefore I own a holy city. That's one holy city following my religion. That's plus three under all circumstances. So that's just a permanent boost. You see, just a little bit of preaching and we've got ourselves, yes, a tabby city right here. And all of a sudden, oh yeah, things are starting to look uh, good here. Because all of a sudden, all of a flipping sudden, plus 10 from Crusade, and plus 3 from the Holy City. So we're starting to get mighty. And on top of that, if a city's following the same religion as me, all of a sudden, my cavalry can just attack it directly. Which, as you can see there, makes a quite frankly dumb amount of damage in a town using basic light cavalry. And we've even got ourselves a first scientist that gives, ooh, bonus science from Holy Site Adjacency. That's actually, uh, that's really good. Uh, though, uh, not here. The best adjacency is over here. Like, seriously, this is basic light cavalry. It is dumb how good this is. Alright, I can just ride into cities at will. It's a thing of beauty. Minus 64. Alright, this city is already almost flipping gone. This is... Oh, this is... This is nice stuff. Right here. So, uh, send in the chariots. We'll just be having Ansira back, actually. Screw you, basically. There we flipping go. Yeah, we'll be keeping that, given it's literally mine. But yeah, Dark Ages. Dangerous now. Really dangerous. 
And now we pick up a very, very important thing indeed. So, the Byzantines have their own unique entertainment district, which is very cheap to throw together. So, provides loads of amenities, which is great. So we're a bit shy of that right now, especially in Thessalonica, because, yeah, this fertile volcanic soil is getting a bit out of hand, quite frankly. So, let's get that down, because, yeah, every time you put down a building inside that thing, you just get a free cavalry unit, even if you don't have enough horses to actually build the thing. And it doesn't cost anything, it's just a freebie. And speak of the devil, there's the first one right there. We just picked up a heavy chariot, so maybe I should have waited for a couple of turns, because yes, stirrups is almost available. And you know what? I think I'll be taking an apostle too. Ah, yes, the ability to convert city-states. That one I quite like, actually. It's not the best one objectively, maybe, but I do rather like it, because uh, I've got a play in mind for that. Okay, a few turns later, we've built up a decent little army of heavy and light cavalry. So, uh, okay, it's time to start seeing, you know, how well we could do against some tougher opposition. Because, yes, we've got a city-state here we don't really uh, need for anything, to be perfectly honest. So, uh, kind of may as well just uh, go in and do our own thing, really. So, getting over here. And, yes, you, uh, you, my friends, I feel like there's not much going on with you, actually. So, how about we just move in and murder you? Step one, just clear out the army. Absolutely lovely. And, yeah, you are going to absolutely annihilate all of this. Because my cavalry are, oh, yeah. My cavalry are in good damn shape. Get in over here, annihilate all of this nonsense. Let's start getting inside the city limits. Because as soon as we're actually inside the city limits, yeah, that's a big old pile of extra stuff. Oh, and that's a promotion. Everybody loves a promotion. So yeah, get inside over here. Absolutely flipping love it. And at this point, oh yeah, we could start tearing their army apart. Yep, they do appear to be sort of just uh, throwing themselves into the meat grinder right now, which I approve of greatly. Okay, city is now formally under siege, so they're not recovering any time soon. Anybody still got to move, by the way? Yeah, you've still got to move, though, admittedly. Uh, yeah, pillage some road, why not? We could do with, yeah, we're kind of, um, we're losing a bit of money, admittedly. We are investing uh, a lot of stuff. Right now, that's turning out to be a bit on the uh, the expensive side. But this should be ours no problem now. Right, now we just move in and start riding them down. The garrison is... Uh, oh dear. The garrison doesn't seem to be... Uh, doesn't seem to be doing so hot, actually. The garrison seems to be falling the flip apart, actually. Looks to me like we're just gonna flip in, walk in, have this city for our own, which is good, because it produces gold, which we desperately need to pay our army, because we're at the point of going bankrupt, because we're maintaining too many troops that we can't afford. Then there's going to be a mass rebellion, and oh bloody hell, we are playing as the Byzantines got it. Well, doesn't really matter so much. Looks to me like we've just managed to grab that lovely. Yes, we'll be keeping that, thank you. It produces, as I say, gold. So, not much, but I guess it'll do. Oh, come on, game. Be nice. That's worth era score, damn it. Okay, we're going to sell some horses to Georgia. Because we're not going to war with Georgia imminently. And she's willing to pay quite a lot for a fair few horses, given I'm already at cap with them. So, uh, that's fine. Okay, so, 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 so. I've moved the army down south. Hopefully, you know, the Netherlands haven't figured out what's about to, uh, what's about to happen to them. And, uh, on top of that, we've made a few preparations. Like, for example, getting down a beautiful wonder over here that just gives me... Uh, a couple of apostles uh, that I can just, you know, move around uh, as I wish. Got a couple of promotions available too, which is very, very nice indeed. But let's just for the moment, you know, stop moving them in the, uh, the right direction. Uh, because uh, we've just managed to get enough era together that, uh, yes indeed, uh, momentarily uh, we get to have a flipping golden age. And if we're very lucky, uh, the Dutch will not be having a golden age. And if that happens, uh, oh... Uh, Oh, it's flipping go time. I've got so many plans. Oh, there it is. The beautiful gold colour is back. And, uh, okay, the Netherlands seem like, well, they say they're okay with us. She looks a bit grumpy, to be honest. 
Oh, what's that? You're in a dark age? Oh, flipping dear! Meaning straight away, we don't even need to declare war. Because this here, this isn't their city anymore. It's just, you know, some random rogue city. So we get to do whatever the flip we want. And by the way, we're just going to be working over on this too. So, ooh, 50-50 right now. And uh, this city has actually stayed tabby-ish, which is spectacular. We converted that bloody ages ago. So, uh, they are struggling to, yeah, get things uh, converted back. Flip and love it. And as for my incoming apostles, well, if we happen to run into any, you know, stupid Dutch missionaries, all the better. Right, step one, get inside their borders. Because once I'm inside the borders, I'm a lot flipping stronger. And yeah, they do have swordsmen, I don't. But inside their borders, not gonna be an issue. Also, I wouldn't mind having, you know, plus two charges to literally all religious units. That's... That's actually going to be pretty darn big. Okay, or Praetorian Guard. So wounded just start healing. That's that's sexy too. But no, let's go for the religion here. All right, because if we can win the religious war, it's going to make everything else a lot easier. Oh, and the Netherlands are even helping me out by actually shooting at these guys with their crossbows, which is, well, that's just lovely. Thanks, guys. Oh, and would you look at that, my favourite promotion in all the world, uh, Translator. So triple strength conversion in other civs, yeah. Yeah, 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 you know what, I think that's fine. And another city falls to tabbyism, good. Good, 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 good. This is what we need, right here. Now we just need to mop up these two as well. And with only four people here and a Translator Apostle just around the corner, I do not think that's gonna be hard. Also, Harold Ardrada's here! Right, my future employee! Well, that's just lovely. And following turn, I'd say we're just going to, uh, yeah, walk straight in. So, uh, this is now going to be, uh, my city, actually. Screw you, basically. Yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be keeping that. I've also renamed the city Netherlands, more like Neverland, which is, I mean, okay, it's not great. It's the best I could come up with off the top of my head. Okay, so, 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 time for us to start putting everything together here, because, uh, yeah, we've got a good army, but we're only just able to afford it, so, uh, if we get down some of the entertainment districts and all their buildings, uh, at that point, we start getting units that don't cost a thing. Right, begin the aggressive spreading! And with that, we've got another city going over to Tabby right here. Okay, now this, this is good. So, uh, yeah, there's conversion, but it's gonna be very, uh, very slow. And good luck here, literally every apostle has translator on it. So, uh, okay, this is, uh, this is gonna be good. We might be able to make a run straight at our holy city right here. Now, one thing we do need, however, is money. Because my light horseman could be upgraded, but I need a giant pile of cash for that. So, uh, I think I know who might be willing to do me that deal. Because fun thing about the other Sips, they love diplomatic favour. They will absolutely just, you know, buy piles of diplomatic favour off you. That's honestly not the best deal. Like, I'm pretty sure I can get better elsewhere. There we go. George is buying diplomatic favour at, uh, yeah, a rather welcome 100 gold per nine. Again, I think we could do better, but I'm not going to say no. That's not terrible. And over to Hong Kong, which, oh my goodness, now happens to uh, belong to me, which is really, really darn nice. So uh, that's very welcome indeed. So, okay, uh, they have now got, yeah, they've now only got uh, two cities remaining. And uh, my apostles uh, can also do beautiful work as spies, just heading deep behind enemy lines uh, and scouting out whatever it is uh, these guys have actually got left. So... Never mind, there was a city I just didn't know was there. Or maybe I did. Did I just not see that? I might have just not seen that. Right, well, it's going to belong to me in a moment. Because I just gave you 666 tabbyism. So you're already, yeah, pretty much uh, half convinced. Because she is a very good cat. In fact, Amsterdam is already on the way to converting organically. It's going to take 10 million years. But bloody hell, that's the capital. That's the holy city. 
So, okay, we want that to fall before we move in, because extra Holy City means extra damage for me. And on top of that, would you believe I'm sending a trader in right now, a friendly trader who just happens to be building a highly convenient road I'll be using. Also, what's that you say? Corsa? I'll be taking a Corsa, that sounds lovely. Because just in theory, oh my goodness, I'm already doing a lot of damage to that lovely town right there. And that's before we actually get any of the, you know, crusade bonuses or anything else. Seriously though, where are their religious units? Because if I was just to kick their ass, that'd be really bloody convenient for me. But they just seem to have uh, wandered off, which is not useful. And uh, massive eruption, don't care, reinforced materials, that temple is tougher than it looks. Right, move in, begin spreading, that's more tabbyism, and now, now the tabbyism is going up, not down, we're reaching a critical point here, oh flip me, looks to me like, oh yeah, this is, uh, this is not looking good for you at all, right, send in the conversion-y people, alright, we're having this place be ours, right, give them a poke, see how well that does, 600 tabbies, and uh, straight up to 3, Straight up to flipping three. Their holy cities are completely screwed. The might of Tabby will not be denied. Okay, troops are in position. And by troops, I mean like, you know, priests, but same thing. And, oh my, what's that? Amsterdam now worships Tabby. Well, isn't that just flipping convenient? Because now, now all of a sudden, if we go and give it a poke, yeah, Taxis is just giving me a permanent plus six under all circumstances. So that... That's pretty bloody nice, but no, 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 no. We must eliminate Protestantism forever to make sure that there is no way they get it back. Tabbyism must be dominant, damn it. And it looks like we've managed to do it. Another spread right there. We have now got, yep, Tabbyism across the board. So uh, there is now no pressure aside from Tabby pressure, meaning everything is just going to uh, reinforce. Hang on, there's... Okay, where's that one pressure coming from? Because that doesn't even make sense. Maybe it's just the fact that, like, it exists? I don't know. Maybe it's the troops. Though on the downside, I think the Netherlands have decided to, you know, snitch and tell teacher that I converted their holy city. Because I suspect there's about to be a, uh, a special congress thing. But given nobody in the world cares about Protestantism, and uh, I don't know if the Netherlands even have the ability to train the priests they'd need to you know, stop Amsterdam being tabbyist. I don't know what they're planning to do at this point. Okay, it turns out Georgia decided to, you know, back the damn thing. So, all right, I'm going to gain score by just maintaining religious units nearby. So, all right, guys, just um, go and chill out. Literally right there. That's, uh, that's fine, I guess. Just, uh, yeah, there's not really much they can do. Oh, and what's this? Is that my unique variant of the knight that I've just unlocked through Divine Right that happens to have, you know, a whole bunch of combat strength and passes on combat strength to other units too? Why, yes. Yes, it is. Also, yeah, I think it might be monarchy time, by the way. Yeah, we're going monarchy. All right, Basil's the new king. or hail King Basil. Oh, and chivalry? That I think we could do with, yes. And with everybody already converted, uh, time for a Praetorian Guard. Would have preferred Varangian, but what can you do? And I may just have uh, lined that up so that uh, the turn after this unlocks our new brand new heavy cavalry unit, we're getting a brand new Hippodrome over in Hippopotopolis. Right, get some courses in production. We have just been sitting on too many horses for too bloody long. And as soon as that's done, we'll do the same. We're going to build a massive, ridiculous swarm of cavalry. And all the same time, my trader is just building a road into the territory. This is, uh, oh, this is lovely. And by the way, that's another four era score. Sexy bastard right there. So that's absolutely lovely. And uh, there he is. Uh, absolutely beautiful and ready to go. Also, fun fact, it would cost me 800 gold to just buy one of them, but I could just buy an arena, then I'd get exactly the same thing. I'd just get a free variant of that same unit, but, you know, cheaper, and I wouldn't need to pay for it going forward, so uh, that's the way to go. You know, I was gonna wait. I was gonna wait a few more turns uh, just for, you know, the religious emergency to end, perhaps, and also we're getting in reinforcements, all the flipping time right now, which is really nice, but they have just sort of uh, 
offered me several of their units on a silver platter. So, do we just want to do this now? Because we could wipe out a large part of their army, like, immediately. You know what? Move my troops just a little bit closer and further towards them here, alright? Just, just be ready. Because uh, trouble might be about to kick off any second. Because, uh, yes indeed, as soon as you get closer to the front, everyone else is going to be much more effective. Yeah, you know what? Sure. Surprise war! I'm going to be honest, it's not really much of a surprise. Like, how much of a surprise can this possibly be? Like, I kind of have been gathering troops on your border for the last century. But alright, fine. Let's say we're officially, you know, in a surprise war right now. Like you didn't see this coming somehow or another. So, okay, everything is now good. And... How on earth have you just gone back to desert? No, 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 no. Back to tabbyism and... Right, so I just get the... I just get the points for that again, do I? I mean, I'm not gonna say no, but sure and bloody hell. That is the, what is it, third wonder I haven't been able to finish building in Constantinople. This is very annoying. Anyway, there's that plus six back again, so that's flipping nice. Yeah, we're not actually inside their borders right now. But on the plus side, uh, courses, uh, promotion within Tagma, uh, flanking bonuses times crazy. So this is, this is all fine. Let's just start softening up their, uh, their units here. So we're basically going to wipe out the Dutch army in this ridiculous mega strike right now, which I do rather approve of. So yeah, that's their, uh, that's their flipping siege equipment, just sort of, uh, annihilated uh, right there. Uh, you can get over here and attack these guys to get them out of the way. Because uh, I'd rather have you move uh, so my superior light cav uh, have a bit more of a shot. Because, uh, oh yeah, courses uh, versus chariots. Now that, that I think will flipping take. Be flipping beautiful. And that's actually enough that you can... No, they're, they're weaker than that. Well... Hmm, probably not worth doing anyway, to be honest. Shame we can't hit these crossbowmen, but I think they can't move, land, and attack in the same turn. So, uh, I suppose uh, that'll have to do. Uh, in which case, would you guys like to, like, move down over here, start attacking these guys? Because uh, that should be pretty bloody simple, really. Yeah, start moving in this direction. They've got no wall defences. Uh, they've got some swordsmen there, but at this point, yeah, I'm slightly ludicrously strong inside these borders. And also, because I'm only taking light knocks per unit, thanks to Praetorian Guard, I'm now healing up every single turn. So screw it, I may as well take a light knock because I'm just going to heal it off momentarily anyway. So, you're looking good. Admittedly, the crossbows might finish you off, but what can you do if that's the case? Okay, they're sending in their swordsman against my chariot, that's wow. Swordsman against chariot and it went that badly for them, that's in embarrassing. They've got their crossbows ashore, but at this point, that's just going to be an absolute slaughter. So my course can just wow. Flipping wow. So just getting over there, destroy them. That's a crossbow unit that's uh, in a hell of a lot of trouble. These guys have retreated onto the sea. You've tried to pull back. Then again, actually, you, you might be a different unit from the one I was expecting. Okay, you just get over here, finish off these bastards, all right? We're going to wipe out this army, no problem whatsoever. And also, because we're killing stuff, tabbyism is going up too. So, okay, we could go straight over here. Oh, flip me, that's, uh, that's strong. Uh, okay, so, 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 so. What we probably want to do is uh, move you into... Can you actually attack? No, you can't attack this turn. Move you to here. Move you to... You can't attack this turn, but you can. So, we'd like you to be here, and then you to be here, and then from that, that should be... I thought that was going to be... Oh, was I looking at the course before? I probably was, you know. You know what? That's fine. It's still a victory. I'll take it. Swordsmen are not to be underestimated. Let's just start moving in the right direction. Move you over to here. They're not going to be able to do anything to you whatsoever. So getting over here. Start you moving in this direction. You may as well just, uh, yeah, just uh, hang out right there. That's fine. Provide some cover so we can move the rest of the cavalry in. Speaking of the cavalry, there is more coming in soon. The thing is, they do still have an army, but 
They just can't do much damage to my units. In particular, they can soften up the chariots, but even then, they can't do much. Right, send the chariot forward because I'd like to... There we go. I thought you'd be over there somewhere. Yeah, I'd like to ride you down. So that's going to be a major victory for me. I'm going to send in the uh, the weak lad right over here just to basically get a really good hit in on that crossbow. There's another crossbow inside the city. That one doesn't worry me so much because, uh, yeah, uh, as it turns out, my heavy cavalry can just sort of uh, walk straight in. Oh, you've got guns, do you? Well, good luck with that. It barely even flipping matters. And of course, units are picking up XP and promotions at the same time. So, uh, yeah, the army's barely really taken much of a knock. Like one chariot, another chariot's a little bit damaged, but pretty much we've killed the vast majority of their army at pretty much no cost. Also, they seem to have been a bit uh, lax on the whole building of defences thing, which really works for me. In fact, it looks like my heavy cavalry could just sort of uh, walk in right now. Yeah, so we just walked in and took that city. So that's um, that's going to be ours at this point. Lovely. We'll be, uh, we'll be keeping that because why not, to be honest? You, meanwhile, can... Yeah, you can just basically run straight through them. They've now completely collapsed, which is good. We've now got friendly territory that we can actually... And yeah, there we go. More and more tabbyism, so that's spectacular. You can just ride straight to that city, to be honest. So just run straight up the road and start poking them. So that's going to do some good work too. That is minus 63. So okay, that city's about to... Uh, that city's going to go down and... Uh, yeah, they were saying, hey, we need to make sure Amsterdam doesn't worship Tabby. I'd be more concerned about you holding on to Amsterdam at all, to be honest. Right, courses are now moving in down the road, and yep, they're, uh, they're trying to use superior technology. But no, their superior technology is no match for our puny weapons, because we brought loads of them. And more error score because we just converted a city to ours during a war against them. Just because, you know what, we're generating so much pressure right now. This is lovely. So yeah, they're now trying to um, out-expand us. So we'll see how that works out for them, I guess. Okay, another city goes down and honestly, we're not going to be able to hold it. So we may as well burn it to the ground, to be honest. There we go, lovely. You see, now we've got less Netherlands and more bananas. So I'm going to call this an unmitigated win. Okay, some of the cities are starting to go a bit on the rogue side, but that's all absolutely fine. We're making excellent money through pillaging and whatnot. And to be honest, we can just sort of uh, keep taking them back if need be. So I'm not really too worried about this. Plus, we can pillage for health. So, yep, the army just never flipping stops. And to be honest, yeah, one of these units can pretty much just take a town by themselves. They're just sort of, they're just running straight in and murdering everything. It's just kind of unfair. And also they're getting flipping promotions as they go. And another city bites the dust. Absolutely lovely. And by the way, is that by any chance a flipping wonder we've just inherited? My goodness, it does rather seem to be. Yes, I'll take the Forbidden City. Thanks, that's really kind of you. Oh, and you know what? Now I've got an extra slot off the Forbidden City. I won't turn down Monumentality again. Yeah, go on. I'll have a settler over there. After all, we did want to come down to this part of the world. And uh, let's just say these guys aren't going to be here for too much longer. Right, more pillaging just to keep the army going. You don't need to pillage because you can actually, uh, you, know, you can promote. So just get over here, stand close by to these guys regardless, and then promote right there. So, come on then, I'll give you another plus ten. This city might be about to rebel, but I kind of don't care. Uh, so that's all absolutely fine because... Uh, ooh, okay, so at uh, this point, Amsterdam's starting to try and put up a fight. Well, let's see how well that works out for them. Because, oh yeah, there's, there's a scout here. Sorry, I forgot about you. You've been here for bloody ages, haven't you? Right, Amsterdam is now officially under siege, so they're not going anywhere. And also, uh, yep, we'll just be taking a bit of science back home with us too. Lovely. Oh, what's that you say? A certain unit should be stronger? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to give that to my... Ooh, heavy or light. Heavy or light. That's... That's a bit on the tough side, actually. I do have more light, so let's just put everything behind that. And also, like, uh, my districts are culture bombs for no well-explained reason. But then again, 
typically you tend to win that one if you just back it like at all. Because everyone votes for themselves, but no one backs themselves. So all you need to do is, uh, yep, there you go. Just back yourself once and you tend to always win that one. Wow, I won both. Well, ho oh, ho, life is getting good. So just in case my cavalry wasn't good enough already, yeah, uh, we're going to be getting rid of that dumb city, by the way. That city's not going to uh, not gonna be there so much anymore. So, naff off. Naff off, because you settled it stupidly. All right. So, that that's going to go. Lovely. So, now, what we're going to do is... Why is this minus 20? Okay. I don't know why this would be minus 20, but I guess it means we need to go and burn Rotterdam to the ground. Also, would you believe it, it's time for the Heavy Cavalry, now lovely and actually upgraded, to go and just uh, murder the heck out of Amsterdam. So they're not looking, no, they're not looking hot. And at this point, just look at that. Look at all of those bonuses on top of each other. It's beautiful. Also, we're going to be taking your religion home with us. Because, in all fairness, it's, wait, that's... Okay, we just burned a shrine of Tabby. I'm really sorry about that. But anyway, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be having Amsterdam now. That's gonna belong to us. And as we take more and more cities, uh, there's gonna be less and less pressure. So yes, we'll be uh, we'll keep that. Not sure if we can uh, hold it because all of this nonsense. But like, okay, we're just playing whack-a-mole with the free cities up north. It's going to be fine. So we're gonna have that. We're gonna try and keep that. Then again, is this? Can I look at it, please? Oh, never mind. It can just go. It was kind of garbage anyway. Right, everybody over to Rotterdam. If anybody needs, like, you know, a bit of a health top-up, there's bloody farms all over it. So, thank you for that, guys. That's really bloody convenient of you. Okay, Amsterdam has immediately revolted, but they're, you know, free city at the moment. These guys in nine turns are going to go back to the Netherlands for some reason. You're going to rebel to free in just a handful of turns, so honestly, we may as well just kind of uh, naff off and leave you to it. This city up here is also going to rebel, and I swear I saw some... I know I saw some flipping crossbows around here somewhere. You guys retreat, because you've got yourself a little bit on the uh, the wounded side. And Rotterdam, we take out, or at least maybe we wait for... I mean, if we wait for this to rebel, this isn't the capital. So at that point, it's more likely to rebel. So maybe we just surround Rotterdam, because... Why on earth did you decide to be here? It's nothing but food. There's no production. Like, literally. Right, well, just go and weaken them a little bit while we're actually here. It's fine. Uh, you come over here. Do a bit of pillaging just to get your health back. That's lovely. You get round the back. Everybody else just get into position to have the city surrounded. And, oh, no, it's by the sea. Okay, fine. So we can't do that. That's all a okay. I think we're just going to... Okay, let's just murder it now, because I think we can literally just murder it in one turn. Okay, yes, we got that very fast. So, that can just go, because that's a... Seriously, that's an awful place for a city. And up north, culture is starting to, you know, become a big thing. So, we're just going to toss some faith at that, just to help speed up. Because we've probably fallen a little bit behind in the culture game. Uh, but that's really not a massive issue at the moment. And, uh, yes, more traders. We could do with more traders. Lovely. Oh, and what's that? Arena in seven? Because we've already got... Yeah, this is this is just free cavalry right here. So this cavalry doesn't uh, cost anything. May as well just uh, send it down south to join the rest of the army. By the way, in four turns, uh, more heavy cavalry. Eight turns, uh, more heavy cavalry. Then we just build arenas. That's even more. Basically, yes, I just have a massive army of free heavy cavalry. It's beautiful. Okay, with the pressure over here removed, uh, at this point we should be able to set up, yes, pretty much wherever we want. So you guys just head in this direction, uh, settle right there, because yes, we need to be close by to uh, the Amber, the Rice, and uh, the Galapagos Isles. Good. Meanwhile, yeah, uh, we need to take Amsterdam back, like, again. Uh, so that's all absolutely fine, just need to stop that being free and independent, because that's not cool. Right, everybody just move in, put the city under siege again, and this time, this time there's going to be less pressure on Amsterdam. So, it's going to be much easier for us to hold it. Especially if we, then again, we don't want to burn this to the ground. We kind of want to hold this too, because uh, this over here, that's full loyalty in a turn. Oh, full loyalty to being free. Okay, but we need to go and take care of, I knew you were hiding over there somewhere. 
Okay, Netherlands, more like Neverland, has rebelled and it's just generated some swordsmen. So that's a bit of an issue, but not a massive one, really. We're about to take back Amsterdam. Rotterdam's now been burned to the ground. Nothing over here exists anymore. So uh, we're going to take this back because this is an original capital. So yes, we do want to keep that. That's fine. And that means uh, we should now be able to send this Corsa straight north over here. You can use to attack these guys directly and... Uh, Yes, yes you can. Just get over there and knock them over too because uh, how's loyalty? Okay, not not great to be honest, but as soon as we knock these guys out, they're going to stop exerting loyalty. So uh, everything's fine. It's all under control. Sooner or later, this game of whack-a-mole will end. Okay, we've taken this city back now. There's about to be even more stuff, but we're going to try and keep this one. We want to keep it because, wow, Rebellion in 8. That's that's pretty positive. That's a big step forward for us. Right, just start mowing down this. Basically, yes, I've got cavalry just running all over the place, winning everything. And every time it starts to get the slightest bit weak, you know, more cavalry arrives from up north. So, uh, yeah, all kind of unfortunate for you, to be honest. Okay. In the north, the reinforcements have taken down Netherlands more like Neverland. So that's now been reoccupied. And I want to keep that because it's actually sitting on some decent resources. So that's fine. Uh, Amsterdam is now starting to settle. Good. I'm going to get a builder out. Wow, 95. That's so cheap because uh, for some reason, everything seems to be on fire or destroyed around here. Not sure how that happened, but don't worry, guys. We're going to fix it up for you. In fact, actually, you've got double iron in this part of the world. Well, that's lovely. We've never had iron before. And the heavy cav is getting a little bit on the weak side, to be honest. So uh, we're going to give these guys an initial poke just to see what goes on. And then, then we're going to heal up on your own farmlands. That's going to be lovely. Oh, we've got more coming in too. That's uh, that's more heavy cavalry. So now we have got superior knights just sort of uh, chilling out, doing their own thing, murdering everybody. And once again, we're going bankrupt, but that's fine because we won that religious emergency. So, uh, okay, someone's going to want to buy all of this lovely, lovely diplomatic stuff. There we go. That'll buy me a few turns to sort out the old economy. And now, finally, at the end of the day, the evil of the Netherlands has been defeated. So, uh, down you go, and uh, oh, no, she's very sad, but that's fine. Uh, you shouldn't have, wait, she didn't actually start a war with me. I started a war with her, but like, she shouldn't have lived next door to me. This is really her fault when you think about it. And go on, we'll keep that because, oh, they had a wonder, but it wasn't done yet, so... Okay, that's the Netherlands defeated, which is uh, great news, meaning now at this point, yeah, there's a bit of rebellion going on, but honestly not too much really. Now, yeah, actually, huge amounts of pressure are going to start piling in from all sorts of different directions. We do also have the Galapagos Isles, which is absolutely beautiful right there. So yeah, we can get over to one, two, uh, ah, darn it, we can't get to that really lovely fish spot over there. Still, we can get to all of this. That's a lovely spot. This here, uh, Amber, that's lovely as well. So yeah, we got ourselves, uh, we got some good stuff going on over here. We have got ourselves Amsterdam. We've just stolen the Forbidden City, which is a brilliant wonder. So that's great. We're going to be able to uh, hold on to this. This city's reasonably well developed at the moment. So uh, yeah, pretty much we own this entire massive continent at this point. Now, Everybody hates us, but that kind of doesn't matter because I have the biggest army in the world, including a huge amount of heavy cavalry that can literally just walk into, you know, a city of their choosing. And in a faith production that before we invade any other continent, we can just send over a giant pile of priests, convert them to me. So I might actually by accident win, you know, a religious victory before a domination victory just because I need to convert everyone up front. And yep, I am most definitely leading in domination right now, which is just lovely and religious too. So yep, things going well. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I think you get the point. This here is Civilization VI with Basil and uh, bloody hell, he's, he's terrifying. Like, if you spawn next to Basil, kill him. Kill him immediately. Do not let him get to, you know, Entertainment District Tech. Because... If he starts spamming these units, he can't be stopped. 
It's an unstoppable cavalry swarm. It's ridiculous, and I kind of love it. So, yeah, he's really, really good. Though he does admittedly do, like, you know, one and only one thing. He gets a religion, he spreads it, he then invades with giant piles of cavalry. That's pretty much the only thing he's really good at. Everything else, he'd just be average. So, uh, yeah, but uh, when he does start doing that, he ain't kidding about. All right, Basil is ridiculously strong. He's great, and uh, next time I play a full game of Civ 6, I am going to fear him. The possibility he might be close by, that's, that's terrifying. He might actually be... I don't know, is he maybe the strongest military civ in the game? He could be, because uh, that's a hell of a thing he gets for free right there. So, uh, yes indeed, ladies and gentlemen, Civ 6 will of course return as more and more things come out of the new Frontier Pass. And, ultimately, when the Frontier Pass is done next year, and we get all these game modes like, you know, Apocalypse Mode, and Secret Societies, and the Dramatic Ages, naturally, at that point, I'm going to do a new full series. A series where I turn every single one of them on at once. It's going to be beautiful. So uh, hopefully you're looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Civilization 6. Thank you very much and goodbye. You know, I really hope we've agreed open borders with Japan, by the way. Otherwise, they have basically just invaded. I may have picked the wrong fight over. Yep. And my sisters, of course, have got even more flipping high-tech, though mysteriously still completely dependent on, you know, an aqueduct. Now, I'm not saying your entire army is mostly already dead, but it kind of actually is.